Hello everyone and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we will be taking a look at Lion Turtles, from animated TV series Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra. At the time of this episode being released, a live-action remake of the original series is about to be released, and having loved the original show so much, I felt this would be a great time to make an episode about some creatures seen there, and decided to go big or go home with the lion turtles, giant beings that are credited with giving bending, pretty much elemental magic, to humans. A few people have asked to see something from the series before, so here's a thank you to them for their comments, and to our patrons and channel members for their support. If you too are enjoying our videos, please consider supporting the channel by liking and subscribing, joining our Patreon, or becoming a channel member to get early looks at all our creatures. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Many creatures in this world remind us of the long past ages of titans, compared to which even the mightiest animals today pale in comparison. However, few of these animals have remained such a fixed presence in our modern world and human traditions as the giants known as lion turtles. Modern lion turtles trace their ancestry to the cynodonts, a group of therapsids, the same group that would eventually lead to the evolution of mammals. Most clades of the cynodont only survived until the late Triassic, but clade Leocelonia having become small generalists, thrived in this new age of giants, having survived until their extinction, upon which they reached the huge sizes they are known for in modern times. One of the most noticeable characteristics of these animals, beyond their modern size, is the presence of neural spines along its back, similar to the sail of Dimetrodon, as well as a related phenomenon, the growth of vegetation on their backs, often resembling tiny forests due to the way they are structured. This is caused by the development of moss or algae on their backs, along their neural spines, eventually expanding to most of their dorsal area, which is protected by thick, hard skin. This vegetation will, eventually, attract the attention of small animals and invertebrates that thrive in this environment, as well as the presence of commensal birds that rid the lion turtles back of potentially harmful parasites. The growth of these small ecosystems, while usually not harmful to the lion turtles, can be incredibly helpful in forest environments, giving them an incredible camouflage that helps them hide among the vegetation, avoiding the attention of potential predators. Due to their relatively slow metabolism, at least compared to mammals, as well as their ability to lower their metabolism further and hibernate during times of scarcity, lion turtles are capable of surviving for hundreds of years. While they reach their adult size relatively quickly, at around 10 to 15 years of age, they will usually keep growing for a while afterwards, reaching sizes as great as 5 meters or 17 feet long and around 6 meters tall, including the height of their neural spines weighing up to 15 tons. Being so big, these animals require a lot of food to sustain themselves, and so will find a great advantage in having vast territories, and therefore food, available to themselves. Therefore, they are very territorial and solitary, individuals rarely approaching each other outside of the mating season. Even calves will leave the territory of their mother and search for their own as soon as they reach maturity. When doing so, young adult lion turtles may often wander into the territory of a bigger, stronger adult, having to move from place to place until they are big enough to compete with other adults. Few species are still extant in this day and age, and have traditionally been grouped in four main groups but this broad categorization is paraphyletic, meaning the species belonging to these groups do not descend from a single ancestor, 
but are in many cases the result of convergent evolution of these titans in similar environments. This classification is, instead, used by the people that live near them merely as a way to identify them in broad, more utilitarian terms. The most common groups are those of land and water lion turtles, species that inhabit the continent and coastal regions, respectively. The land lion turtles have extremely powerful limbs, which they use to dig burrows inside which they give birth to their calves, leaving them well protected from danger. Adult individuals without calves, however, will simply dig trenches inside which they rest, camouflaged thanks to their patterns that resemble soil and mud, and to their symbiotic plants. When facing potential predators, these animals are known to use their powerful limbs to throw dirt or big rocks at them, if not outright trampling them. Sea lion turtles, as their name indicates, are semi-aquatic, using their paddled extremities to propel themselves across the water. While they spend most of their time near the coastline, many species are capable of swimming through the open ocean, having learned to take advantage of the ocean's currents to do so. Their counter-shading and undulating patterns help disguise their shape in the water, and their size will protect them from most predators. When this is not enough, however, they will use their weights and powerful limbs to generate waves around them, destabilizing potential predators enough to allow the turtle lion to counterattack with its powerful bite. Sky lion turtles, a much rarer group, have adapted to life at high altitudes, in the peaks of tall mountains. As a result, they are smaller and lighter than other related species, but much more nimble in order to climb the steep peaks they inhabit. They are well adapted to life in this freezing, low oxygen environment, having a layer of fat that protects them from the cold and bigger lungs that help them extract oxygen from the air, also being able to control their breathing when at higher altitudes. Most amazing of all, however, are the volcanic lion turtles, a single species known to inhabit the volcanic regions of Japan. This species has developed a unique defense mechanism, as these lion turtles will gently rub their forepaws on a mineral found in their environment, called stibnite, which contains antimony trisulfide. The presence of this compound coating its paws and claws is usually of little concern to these creatures, remaining unreactive as the animal walks and forages. But should this animal feel threatened, they will begin roaring loudly and pawing with their four limbs, running their paws a few centimeters off the ground, as a warning. Should this display not intimidate the opponent, they will scrape the volcanic rock around them with their paws, the friction causing the compound coating them to ignite, producing sparks and even flames in many cases, a very effective deterrent to most predators. These sparks and flames, luckily, are too short-lived to cause damage to the thick skin of these animals' paws. While these animals are great examples of hardiness and survival, even they could not stave off extinction forever. While they did relatively well during the reign of dinosaurs, the KPG extinction and posterior proliferation of mammals caused the surviving species to find themselves outcompeted in many environments leading to a steady decline in populations and diversity even before humans evolved, with the Ice Age reducing their numbers even more. They did, however, experience a brief respite during the early age of humanity. By observing them carefully, many developing civilizations learned to develop mining tools and techniques, to find the best ocean currents to travel on and expand to new territories, to brave the heights and find food in them, and even learning respiration techniques that improved their chances of survival in there. Most importantly, humans learned the basic chemistry required to use fire in ways that would come to have an often terrible effect on the world around them. For all this, 
These humans would consider the lion turtles as sacred beings, often giving them food offerings and hunting the predators of these animals and their calves, leading to an almost symbiotic pacific coexistence between the two species. The appearance of tiny forests on their back even led to the legend that mountains and even the world itself rested atop the backs of particularly big lion turtles. As time went on, human activity began affecting the wild populations of the lion turtles even further, with humanity slowly encroaching on their habitat. While there are still surviving species of lion turtle, their low numbers, solitary living and wide living ranges mean they are rarely seen by humanity anymore. And that's it for Speculative Biology Look at Lion Turtles. And unusually for our channel, we went full late surviving prehistoric creatures. In the past, I have only used extinct creatures as the basis for our reimaginings very few times, and that is counting creatures that are already extinct within the context of the reimagining, like with Rodan, or with creatures from the Mario series which are in their own separate continuity from regular videos. However, in this case, things got interesting as we had in our hands a creature that has a mix of mammal and reptile features, and one that, within its setting, is very ancient and regarded as the stuff of legends, and in the process of turning this being into a biologically plausible organism, my mind went very quickly to the ancient synapsids that ruled the land before the age of dinosaurs. And upon doing some research, I knew I wanted to model the lion turtles on these amazing beings, especially on the Dicynodons, with their delightfully weird appearance. This, of course, presented a challenge due to this little thing called extinction, which meant I had to figure out how to take them to the modern world since the relationship between humans and lion turtles in Avatar was too important to leave aside. However, some modern clades, like turtles, have survived to the modern day since the Triassic, and modern land mammals and reptiles also survived the KPG extinction, for the most part, by being small generalists, meaning there was a little leeway in terms of the survival of our lion turtles. The next hard thing was the whole elemental bending aspect, which was rendered difficult because it is inherently magic and even spiritual in nature, so taking a less literal approach had to be the way to go, but still connecting them to humanity both as teachers and sacred beings. In the end, I'm happy with how this one turned out, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And remember, if there's any type of creature you'd like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.